Visit my fabulous sponsor, Ka Gold Jewelry, link in the description below. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of November 10, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And it is a sky with just so much happening. It truly is very active this week. We do have a full moon, which is getting a lot of the attention now. And it's active, it's connecting harmoniously with big power players in the sky. But at the same time, we have Jupiter making one of its last important alignments before it changes signs in about three weeks time. And we've also got a pivotal moment as part of the larger Mercury retrograde season. So there's a lot to talk about here. Let's start with the full moon. This full moon happens right around Tuesday. It is in the sign of Taurus. It is speaking in harmony with Neptune, in supreme harmony with Pluto and Saturn both. And it is standing across the sky from Mercury and the sun closely conjunct at the time of the full moon. I feel like when it is that a full moon is so active, is connecting with so many power players, on the one hand, it means it has that much more power, but it has that much more sweeping power as well. We're bringing in elements from different areas of our lives, different things that we are learning based on how it is that these big planets are transiting in our chart, based on our sun sign, based on our moon sign. All of these speak to how we're tapping into that energy. And we're pulling in that learning, we're pulling in these skills and these elements of ourselves into how it is that we are going to bring a key matter into fruition. In at least one area of life, we are taking practical steps and we are a part of meaningful transformation in our lives, the kind that has the potential to truly stabilize our lives long after this full moon is over. The sign of Taurus is an interesting one. Uh, a lot of people think of it as connected to money. It is, right? It, it's connected to prosperity and how we understand it, but I feel like it is more connected to our understanding of the earthly experience, uh, the world that we have created, what it means to be an incarnated being at this time and in this world. It is also the energy of Taurus that reminds us to enjoy our journey, to enjoy the five senses fully. And that part of awareness, part of awakenedness is to be so fully present in our five senses that the past loses power and the anxieties about the future no longer matter. We are so with our senses. We're so able to see what we are seeing now, to smell, to touch, to taste, to hear the sounds of our environment in this moment that we lose any power that the past or the future has on us. And we find true power. The present is where the power is. And it is also the energy of Taurus that is deeply spiritual. You know, it is often said that Buddha was a Taurus. Buddha who was born, Siddhartha was born, was said to be born on the fourth day of the fourth month of the Chinese calendar. And we know that that falls somewhere around uh, late April to early May, which is Taurus seasons. There are some circles in North America, especially some circles who like to celebrate his birthday on the 4th of April, but that is highly symbolic. It is his birth chart that we can actually find online. And we can see that he had a lot of very strong Taurian energy, which meant that he had a strong focus on embodiment and of being willing and able to see the sacred in the earthly experience, in the environment, in our earthly realm. It was here that the sacred could be found within ourselves, but through our senses. The Buddha spoke a lot about suffering as well and how it is that we participate in our own suffering, how it is that our thoughts and our emotions magnify our suffering. Life is suffering in many ways, uh, according to the teachings of the Buddha. There are a lot of things that we don't have power over. If we're lucky, we will age. And that means that we will experience our bodies changing through the process. If we are uh, fortunate enough to live long enough, well, it is also possible that we will experience people that we care about passing away as well. 
It is this sense of having to accept life on life's terms, the sense of having to accept what the earthly experience is, but still to understand that when we are with our five senses, that is where we are at the height of our power as human beings, because that is where we release ourselves from suffering. And it is the freedom of suffering that is ultimately peace. That is the definition of a person at peace. When they free themselves from the anxieties of the past or any kind of fear of what the future may bring, and you are so completely with your breath, uh, your sight, your hearing, your taste, when you are so completely with all of the five senses, the smells around you, it is in that moment that you are able to find the greatest peace. That is the pathway to peace, according to some of the teachings of the Buddha. And so it is this full moon that is going to invite us to consider how it is that presence and being truly present is a transformative experience. It is a grounding experience, a stabilizing experience. It is all that beautiful Saturn and Pluto energy coming in with this full moon that suggests we are able to understand and to take whatever it is that is happening now and to use it in a way that brings long lasting benefits and truly a sense of authenticity into our lives. Now, when you think about what it means to be authentic, I know that that definition is going to be unique for a lot of different people out there. But one thing we can say is that being truly authentic is to trust yourself and to be yourself outside of the conditioning or the expectations of others. To truly step into your own power very often can only be found in the here and now. And if this full moon is anything, it is powerful. The fact that Mercury is standing across the sky from this full moon does suggest that our interactions with other people through conversation or other forms of communication end up being key in helping us to realize what some of the unique lessons are going to be, what our own unique pathway towards authenticity and stabilization and inspiration and magic with a sky like this are going to be under the light of the full moon. But the full moon isn't the only thing happening this week under the light of the full moon. Within hours, we are going to have an exact moment of a conversation between Mars and Jupiter. Now, this is one of the last important connections that Jupiter is going to make. The next will come a little bit later this month when Jupiter meets Venus in the sky. And it is now as we start to round up finish off this year-long 13 month long transit of jupiter moving through its home sign of sagittarius this is going to be one of those moments where we feel a sense of excitement or enthusiasm of the possibilities a sense of understanding as to where it is and how it is jupiter moving through the sign of sagittarius has been meant to bless our lives in important ways there is a sense of openness now that I'm especially encouraged by and a sense of the great possibilities ahead at the same time. Now it is Mars moving through the sign of Libra. That is partnerships. That is our one-on-one -on -one interactions and alliances. So again, it is other people that are figuring into how it is we are experiencing and realizing blessings at this time. You know, an interesting observation I had in Feng Shui. So Feng Shui is essentially this idea of aligning your home with heaven. And it is uh, among the branch of Chinese metaphysics. And I am a student of Feng Shui. I absolutely love it. And it is in Feng Shui that the same area of the chart, uh, of the, the home chart, if you will, right? There's like nine stars in the chart, nine sectors of the home and there's always one sector and that can be based on you know where it is that year where it is that month based on you and your birthday um, all of that can determine what that sector is for you whether it's in the east or the west or, or or so on but there's one sector where it rules wealth and it also rules helpful people 
And I found that really intriguing that there's this understanding within that tradition that it is in knowing people that you are able to build wealth, you're able to build prosperity in your life. And so with a sky like this representing so much interaction, so much possibility and promise, it is going to be other people who are a key part of allowing us to realize some of the greatest blessings this week. And we also have key moments as part of the larger Mercury retrograde season. So if you think back in the middle of October, right around October 15 is when Mercury went into shadow. And at that time, immediately reached out and connected in harmony with Saturn and Pluto and in supreme harmony with Neptune. And I may have mentioned at that time, I'm pretty sure I did because sometimes I just get into a zone and I just start to, you know, riding a wave as I like to think of it. But I would have mentioned it at that time um, that this was a defining alignment. These particular conversations were about the characteristic of this Mercury retrograde season and how it is meant to bless us. Normally, we don't think of Mercury retrograde as representing blessings, but it absolutely can be. And what's different now is on the one hand, Mercury is retrograde, but he's basically slowing down to a standstill. Next week, Mercury goes direct. And it is the week after that that we'll have another uh, perfect set of alignments between Mercury and these three planets that I mentioned. However, as we move towards the end of the week, Mercury is slowing right down to a standstill. And given what astrologers call the orb, meaning how far apart the precision of the conversations is, I actually feel that it is Mercury that is essentially holding these conversations now and right to the end of the month, making for a very powerful two to three week cycle for us. What is also different this week is that the sun is in the mix. The sun is right there with Mercury and speaking to these same power players, bringing heat, bringing power. And all of this to me adds up to mainly where it is that you thought an opportunity was lost, where it is perhaps in the middle of October, maybe you connected with somebody or you heard something or you thought that something could come together and something would manifest and then it just kind of washed away or went away or you felt like it, it petered out. It didn't have legs. It didn't gain any momentum at that time. This is where it can come back around. This is where if it was that you thought you had an opportunity or you went for something, but then you didn't hear anything. This is where you may feel like things are moving forward. And so ultimately what this is, is that sense of another shot, another opportunity, another go at it, something that matters, something that you feel is going to bring transformation and stability. It's Pluto and Saturn, how powerfully they are being activated this week by a full moon, by the sun, by Mercury. These are the planets that speak to transformation, which is Pluto, and stabilization and the long-term success and progress, that's Saturn. And then you've got Neptune in the mix, which is magic, which is inspiration, which is faith, knowing that what is for you will be there for you. Knowing that you can have faith in your life and in yourself and in your future. And that faith in and of itself can allow you to be more present, can allow you to be in this moment and with your five senses that much more fully. That is the freedom and the power and the potential promised this week. Finally, right around Thursday, we are going to have an alignment between Venus and Neptune. Venus right now is moving through the sign of Sagittarius, and it is uh, this connection with Neptune that can sometimes speak to uh, allowing ourselves to get caught up in an illusion or also, and I'm so sorry to say this, but it can represent some disappointment as well. Now, here's the thing. On the one hand, we have all that very empowered energy of Mars and Jupiter, and Jupiter is in the sign of Sagittarius right now as well. And then we have this moment that can represent some fear, heightened emotion, feeling like we're caught up in emotion that just washes over us. But here's the thing. As soon as it comes, it can also go. As soon as we feel as if maybe there's some fear creeping up, we're able to empower ourselves by learning from it and let it go. 
As soon as we feel like there may be an opportunity here that we're really excited about, but then we have to look at ourselves and question whether we have the confidence or whether we feel like we are really worthy of it. And we look at it and we let it go. And where it is that uh, some of the energy this week can speak to a desire for another person, feeling attracted or drawn or motivated towards another person, it is Venus speaking with Neptune that can raise some questions around an attraction. Regardless of what it is for you as part of your unique journey, remember, this is energy that comes and goes just as quickly. It is important to consider where it is that your own fears may be in the way of an honest assessment of what is taking place. And at the end of the day, I truly do believe it isn't about anyone else. It is about you and what you did and how it is that you interacted in any given situation. That is where confidence comes from. That is where genuine self-respect comes from as well. What I love about this week for us, well, look, I'm giving it to the full moon. That is such beautiful and inspired energy. It is energy that is inviting us to make practical progress, to really ground ourselves in a vision for our future and to create change where it's going to be truly meaningful. At the same time, with all the Neptunian energy this week, there are plenty of blessings to go around. Stay focused on them because it is as you focus in on blessings and take ownership for your own actions that those blessings magnify. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com, sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. There are brand new classes for synchronicity coming up. Wait, before I talk about that, maybe you notice things look a little bit different here. I'm at an Airbnb. I'm on a very quick trip to Mexico City, uh, just here for the weekend for lots of different things. Uh, professional, personal. Uh, my cousin is here as part of her master's program for a few weeks as well. And so it is just, it's just perfect timing. And it is one of my very favorite cities in the world. Uh, I always feel so welcome and I just love it so much. I feel so inspired here. So it's good to be in Mexico City. Now let's talk about Synchronicity University. The winter session is announced. And once again, if you sign up in the month of November, you get to choose your own tuition. I don't know if you can hear the city. The city is very loud where I am in this Airbnb, but yes, if you sign up early, you get to choose your tuition as low as just $5 a class. Where can you get astrology classes for $5 a class? I don't know, um, but I know that a lot of people have expressed a lot of gratitude for it. And it is these sessions that continue to grow and grow. More and more people sign up and thank you. Thank you to my returning students. Thank you to the new students. Once again, all of these classes were chosen by requests by students, my fabulous students. Um, and they include this coming winter session, which starts in January, but like I said, the, the choose your tuition rate is only for November. Um, the first class we are going to have is on Venus in the astrology chart. We'll go through the signs and houses of Venus. I really wanted to do a Venus uh, class because I think that we can, you know, we get really heavy duty with some of the outer planets. Those are fun as well, but it is a Venus that is such a personal energy and also an important energy. So I think it'll be fun to explore that together. And then we'll have a follow-up class uh, to Pluto. So it was the term that is about to finish now, the autumn session that we had Pluto in the astrology chart. We're gonna take that further with Pluto uh, in aspect and by transit. We're gonna be looking at that in week two. In week three, Jupiter by transit and aspect. And then we are going to do a class on chart rulerships, looking at the ruling planet of the chart and what it means when it's in a different house of the chart. And finally, we are going to have a class on lunar mansions. That's gonna be a lot of fun, especially to the students who really enjoyed the astrological magic classes. I'll be incorporating some of the magical implications and then the more psychological 
um, interpretations as well. So that'll be a lot of fun. And then finally, the bonus class is going to be a Q&A for your follow-up questions because there are always follow-up questions. So uh, I'm really looking forward to another experience with you guys. The experience we're currently having uh, by the time this airs the class would have already been over today uh, a class on electional astrology next week it's the q a uh, so the follow-up questions for those who've been part of the autumn session and then we step into high gear uh, and move towards the winter session so i hope that you absolutely enjoyed the classes that were this session you can download uh, those classes on my website right now as you are inspired and I look forward to the next session and all the students that are going to be there and thank you thank you for your trust and I look forward to meeting you in class my book the body and the cosmos is available for pre-order through Amazon right now now the thing to remember about pre-order the official launch date is December 9 however uh, the pre-order is only for the ebook the print version is also going to be available December 9 as well so if you want to hang tight and wait for that but it is the ebook that is pre-order. If you do the pre-order before December 8, before the book is published, um, then you get a free gift. The free gift will be sent to you December 9. And it is the meditations that are in the book because the book has 12 meditations, one for each sign. And I actually recorded the audio to um, those particular meditations. So you get this guided audio with music and uh, instead of reading it and learning it and memorizing it, which you can do as well, which can be really rewarding in its own right, um, you can listen to the audio and enjoy that. And uh, that is also for sale. Just the audio is for sale. That pack of 12 meditations for $19.95 on my website right now. And the advanced copies have all gone out except for a small number of people who um, didn't confirm their addresses with us. So I have those packets, they're ready to go as soon as, or rather if you haven't confirmed your address with us and you ordered an advanced copy, please do get in touch with us through the contact form on my website so we can make sure that you get your advanced copy of The Body and The Cosmos. Now for live events, there are so many live events coming up. I will be in Florida, January 11, uh, and it is going to be my book launch party, which is free to attend in the morning. And that will be followed by a talk uh, on the 2020s and then a workshop on past lives in the astrology chart. So you're welcome to join us for either of those or one of those or all of those. You would be very welcome. And links are in the description below. And then I will be heading on a cruise. I'll be part of a cruise event with world-renowned astrologers on board. It is shaping up to be a whole lot of fun as well. Over 60 people have already signed up. And so I think that it is going to be a very rewarding experience. If you would like to last minute secure your spot, if you feel called to it to join us on this amazing life transforming experience, then you would be very welcome. And again, links are in the description below. And save the date, a heads up, I am going to be in plenty of places around the world in 2020. And that is still building where I'm going to be. But for now, in March, in late March, I will be in Istanbul. In uh, Early April, I will be in Thailand, in Bangkok, Thailand. I love Thailand. Um, and then in May, May is going to be busy because I will first be uh, speaking in Toronto, my hometown, and then I'll be speaking in Seattle, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, and then I'm headed straight to Las Vegas. I'm coming back to Vegas and I'm really very excited about that. We're going to have a lot of fun in Vegas and this time I'll be doing a talk and a weekend workshop as well. So uh, a fun experience all around. The crowd was so amazing the last time that I was in Vegas. So I'm looking forward to reconnecting with people, meeting new people and all of that in all the places that I go. And then finally in September, I will be in Colorado uh, as part of the ESAR conference. World renowned astrologers from all over the world are gonna be attending this conference and it's such a privilege to be among them. And so wherever you are on this planet, I hope that we get to meet uh, and have a selfie and have hugs uh, and share our love of astrology in real time. And thank you. I hope that the sounds of the city didn't bug you too much. I tried to keep going, uh, but I just so appreciate you guys so much. And I love being able to do uh, this webcast from everywhere I go. 
that's part of the fun actually i like to bring you guys along with whatever energy i'm moving through or stepping through at the time meaning whatever city i may be in and so right now i'm in my one of my very favorite cities uh in the world mexico city and i'm so happy that you could join me and uh that you're here and that you're watching and that to be some part of your sacred journey it truly is such a blessing thank you well thank you again it'll be a great week enjoy